today we will talk about the urinary system or excretory system this excretory system before coming to the astrology part i want to tell you about cross of the excretory system excretory system is consisting of a pair of kidney a pair of ureter urinary bladder and urethra all these structures are the parts of excretory system okay now the kidneys they are present in posterior abdominal wall and they are also the example of retroperitoneal organ these kidneys which are present in the posterior abdominal wall they are surrounding by the connective tissue capsule which is thin but this thin connective tissue capsule is continued in the part of the substance of the kidney this is the capsule which is continued in the substance of the part of kidney and this capsule is named as true capsule of the kidney true capsule of the kidney no doubt it is thin but it is continued into the substance of the kidney and surrounding this capsule there is fatty tissue surrounding the kidney and this is called perinephric fat perinephric fat outside the fatty tissue which is surrounding the kidney and named as perinephric fat there is the renal fascia there is a renal fascia and that is called fascia of girota so all these structures they are surrounding the kidney starting from outer side fascia girota perinephric fat and two capsule let me see the kidney inner part of the kidney or parenchyma of the kidney is consisting of outer layer cortex part inner layer medulla the cortex part is darkly stained and consisting of renal capsule and the part of the renal tubules all right the medullary part is comparatively lighter and static okay now starting the part of the kidneys the kidneys are consisting of functional unit the structural and functional unit of the kidneys are nephron and the number of the nephron in human being are about millions and these nephrons they are consisting of two parts renal corpuscles and the renal tubules yadav get one kar do what about the rest of the students why the strength is so poor and listen all of you if you want to go in the account section go after the class not before the class because i will not revise the topic again okay before talking of the renal corpuscles see the part as i have told you that parenchyma of the kidney is dividing into two parts the outer lighter stained darkly stained part granular that is the cortex part and inner part is medulla when we focus the slide you will see the same picture that the medulla which is showing these pyramids number of the pyramids are about 8 to 13 and the bases of the pyramids are facing towards the cortex while their apices are facing towards 
part of the sinus of the kidney another thing you see here when we see the gross section of the kidney take the sagittal section of the kidney you understand the sagittal section that is midline section that will show that medial border of the kidney this one this is the lateral border and this is the medial border this medial border of the kidney in the middle it is showing the dilated part that is called hilum of the kidney in through the hilum of the kidney you are seeing this dilated structure that is called renal pelvis that is called renal pelvis and as we proceed from renal pelvis towards the medullary part you are seeing the dilated another part these two or three number these are called major calices i am repeating again this is the renal pelvis and this renal pelvis proceed towards the medullary part it is showing the two to three dilated part these are called the major calices each major calices see this one see any one these major calices again divide and forming two to three minor calices so these are the minor calices okay now we can say that apices of the pyramid they are continued into the minor calices a duct of bellini start from the apices of the pyramid passing through the minor calices and finally it opens into the part of the renal pelvis that means the duct of bellini connect the apices of the pyramid to the calices and this major calice they continued into the renal pelvis so this is the dilated part is the renal pelvis and this renal pelvis is continued downward into the ureter and ureter is opening into the urinary bladder urinary bladder is temporary storing of the urine and from this urinary bladder through the urethra the urine is excreted out so this is the cross part when we see the kidney crossly these are the structures which you will see and this picture is seen in the sagittal section now histologically when i have told you the structural and functional unit of the kidney is the nephron nephron is consisting of renal corpuscles and renal tubules renal corpuscles and renal tubules the renal corpuscles itself is consisting of look here you are seeing the rounded structure this one and inside it there is a tuft of the red color masses this rounded structure is double layer that i will show you again this is double layer this is called the bowman's capsule so bowman's capsule is having the two layers outer parietal layer and inner visceral layer the parietal layer is consisting of squamous epithelial cells while the inner layer or the visceral layer is lined by specialized cells podocytes the space between the two layers of bowman's capsule is called urinary space look here this is the peripheral layer lined by the squamous epithelial cells and visceral layer is lined by podocytes that is not shown here i will show you in the next slide so one is the bowman's capsule i am telling you the part of renal capsule another in the central of it is you will find the tuft of capillaries tuft of capillaries this is called glomerulus this is called glomerulus and this tuft of capillary is formed efferent arteriole is entering and giving the capillaries and through the efferent arteriole it comes out so the capillary network formed by the efferent arteriole and efferent arteriole inside the bowman's capsule is called glomerulus 
So renal corpuscles is a part of two things, Bowman's capsule and glomerulus. Now again see this capsule. Look here, one end of it is this through which the efferent arteriole enters and efferent arteriole comes out. I am talking of this. This is called vascular pole. This is called vascular pole. And another pole is this one from which the tubules start. So one end of the glomerulus is the vascular pole. Another is the urinary pole. From the urinary pole, you are seeing here that all these parts, this is the proximal part or proximal convoluted tubule, PCT, proximal convoluted tubule. So proximal convoluted tubules begins from the urinary space or urinary pole of the Bowman's capsule. And it is convoluted, highly convoluted. And lower down it is the straight part. So PCT is having the two parts, convoluted part and straight part. After the renal corpuscles, see the second part of the nephron. What is that? That is the renal tubules. The renal tubules are consisting of PCT, proximal convoluted tubule, loop of Henle, and the distal convoluted tubules, and the part collecting tubules, and this is the collecting duct. Now, the PCT, look here, there is the interpret line you can see here. This interpret line is showing that the part of the PCT, whole, convoluted part and straight part. The part ascending limb of the loop of Henle, this is the descending limb of the loop of Henle. The part of the ascending limb of loop of Henle and distal convoluted tubules are Partly the collecting tubules and collecting ducts, these are present in the cortex. So cortex is having the both part, PCT part and DCT part, and also the smaller part of the loop of Henle. While the medullary part is having the large number of the collecting ducts and loop of Henle. After seeing this nephron, now we come to the part, separated part of the renal corpuscles. See this one. This is the parietal layer. Look here. This is the vascular pole through which the efferent arteriole enters and the efferent arteriole goes out. This is the urinary pole from which the PCT starts. The layers between the two the vascular, the urinary, the parietal layer and the visceral layer, that layer is called urinary space. You can see this diagram also. This is the part of the renal cortex. In the cortex part, this is the Bowman's capsule, glomerulus, and surrounding it, the part is of PCT, GCT, all these are present in the renal cortex. So, point is this, once we identify the cortex, the question of the examiner, which is the PCT, which is the DCT. Proximal convoluted tubule, they are lined by low columnar or cuboidal cell with breast border or striated border, underlying the breast border. You can differentiate PCT from DCT only by seeing the breast border or pink color line over the cuboidal cells or low columnar cells. In distal convoluted tubules, they also line by the cuboidal cell. So difficult to differentiate. Only the point left is stated border or breast border. And cortex part is having both PCT and DCT. Loop of LA, they are very thin. Okay, before this, coming this, PCT, the function of the PCT, proximal convoluted tubules, they are helping in the filtration and 
also helps in the absorption of glucose, amino acids, sodium, chloride and phosphate. The function of the renal corpuscles is of secretion and PCT is helps in the absorption of these sodium, amino acids, glucose, chloride, chloride and also phosphate. Now come to the part of loop of Henle. See this diagram. You can easily differentiate. <coughs> the medullary part is rich in the part of the loop of Henle and DCT and all this. Here what you will find, the loop of Henle, it is having the two segments. The descending part of the loop of Henle, they are thin. It is lined by the squamous epithelial cells or maybe the I am talking of this part. Look here. This is the thin segment descending and this is the loop. Again, both are lined by the squamous epithelial cells and this ascending part of the loop of Henle, which is thick, it is lined by the cuboidal epithelial cells. The function of loop of Henle helps in the absorption of water and also the part of the <coughs> sodium. Then come to the part of distal convoluted tubules. It is lined again by the cuboidal cells. It is lined by the cuboidal cells and the function of it is, it helps in the absorption of sodium and bicarbonates but the main function of it is secreting the potassium ion and the secretion of potassium ion is under the control of aldosterone, hormone aldosterone which is coming from the zona glomerulosa of the suprarenal gland. The function, main function of DCT is secretion of potassium ion and that is the under the control of hormone aldosterone and this hormone aldosterone is secreted from zona glomerulosa of suprarenal glands. Then the part of collecting ducts, it is the function of collecting ducts concentrate the urine by absorbing the water and salt. And the function of the collecting duct, which is concentrating the urine, is under the control of hormone ADH, antidiuretic hormone. All these we have seen, but the most important part, JG apparatus, juxta glomerular apparatus, on which always the short notes ask. Look this part. At the vascular pole of Bowman's capsule, at the vascular pole of the Bowman's capsule, look here. As I told you, the efferent arteriole comes here and efferent arteriole goes out. So, what is the lining of proximal convoluted tubule? Cuboidal cells or low columnar cells? with fresh water. Now what happens? That the part of the Bowman's capsule as it comes closer to the efferent arteriole, look here. This is the efferent arteriole. As it comes closer to this part, the part of the proximal convoluted tubule, when it comes closer to the efferent arteriole, Look here, this one, look here, this is the part of efferent arteriole. As it comes closer to the part of renal capsules, sorry, the Bowman's capsule, itself becomes 
columnar and larger. Look here. Here the cells are cuboidal. As it comes closer here to the part of afferent arteriole, the cells of PCT becomes columnar and thicker. This is called macula densa. This is called macula densa. The PCT as reaching to the vascular pole. The part of the PCT, proximal convoluted tubule at vascular pole, which is closer to the afferent RTO. At this site, the cells of proximal convoluted tubules becomes columnar and thicker. This is called macula densa. One thing. Another thing is the tunica media of afferent RTO. The smooth muscle fiber of tunica media of afferent RTO, they become thicker and larger. This one. These are called JG cells, juxtaglomerular cells. And third type of cells, look here, they are not present in the capsule and neither in the part of PCT and nor at the part of afferent artery. I am talking of these cells. These stellate cells, which are extra glomerular, they are called lasik cells or Polkison cells. Lasik cells or Polkison cells. And they are secreting the hormone erythropoietin. And this erythropoietin hormone helps in the maturation of RBCs. So, glomerular JG apparatus consisting of three parts macula densa, JG cells, and Polkison cells or the Lasik cells. All these three are the part of JG apparatus. The function of the JG apparatus, they are secreting the hormone renin. They are secreting the hormone renin and this hormone is acting over the angiotensinogen. Likriyakaru, yaad rega. Don't sit like a police chap. You will see the multiple books of the physiology and this. I concern collected all of them. So hormone renin is acting over the angiotensinogen which is present in plasma and converting this into angiotensinogen 1. Angiotensinogen 1 is converting by the converting enzymes into angiotensinogen 2. This angiotensinogen sac contract the smooth muscles of the arteriole. This contract the arteriole blood pressure responsible for the increasing blood pressure. One thing. Another thing, this hormone, this is also acting over the zona glomerulosa of the suprarenal gland and releasing the hormone aldosterone. Stimulate that and releasing the hormone aldosterone. Responsible that act as a response to balance of the sodium ion and stimulate the potassium, secrete the potassium. Thus, the kidney is also regulating the blood pressure of the body. Its function is not only the excretion of the urine, but also the absorption of the water and ionic valence. Third, the concentration, the BP, it also regulates the blood pressure. So, this diagram is important for the JG apparatus 
and I had told you all the functions of the different cells. The Olkison cells, they responsible or they increase the maturation of the RBC. When we focus the slide of kidney, you will see this picture. You are seeing here the tuft of structures like this, this. What are these? These are the glomeruli. So in the cortex part, you will see the extreme number of the glomeruli. These rounded structures, what are these? These are the glomerulus. And glomerulus is consisting of Bowman's capsule and tuft of capillary. And surrounding it, in between them, you are seeing the part of PCT and DCT. So this is the part of the renal cortex. And this is the medullary part where you can see the duct and all this. So you can easily identify the slide of the kidney. Okay, now one more point I will tell you here because I don't think whether you understand the gross part or not. When we see the cortex part, the sagittal section of the kidney, as I have told you that is the medulla is having the pyramids, number of the pyramids may be the 13, 8 to 13. The base of the pyramid are facing towards the cortex. Look here. The part of the, what is this part? Medullary part and this is the cortex. So I am telling you this part. From the base, the medullary part of kidney is extending into the cortex. So from the base, the medullary part of kidney extending into the cortex. And this part is called medullary rays. This part is called medullary rays. So what is the medullary rays that the medulla from the base of the pyramid extending into the cortex part that is called medullary rays and this is showing here the presence of collecting ducts and duct of welling. Okay, similarly see between the two pyramids whitish part this is the renal column of Bertin that is the cortex is extending in the medulla between the adjacent pyramids. This is the Bertin part, renal column of Bertin. The another part you will read in the gross, the renal artery which is entering into the kidney, hilum of the kidney and dividing into the five segmental branches. And these five segmental branches, they again dividing, passing between the column that is very good course and sometimes the question is asked only on the blood supply of the kidney. So read it carefully. If you don't follow, I will teach you again. At present, now come to the next. As we pass on the kidney, the renal pelvis is continued downward into the ureter. So ureter are the muscular tube. The function of it is, it is carrying down the urine into the urinary bladder. The section of the ureter is very simple. Once we focus the slide, you can easily identify. The lumen of the ureter is seen star-shaped. You can see here, star-shaped lumen. So once you see the star-shaped lumen, your mind will click that the slide can be ureter. But there is one more slide where the lumen is star shape. Follow. Continued in the classes. That will come into the reproductive system. In female reproductive system, there is one more slide where you will see the star shape lumen. So, when you see the star-shaped lumen, confirm yourself the epithelium is transitional or not. If the epithelium is transitional, definitely it is ureter. Okay? And transitional epithelium, it is lying over the basement membrane. The cells are low columnar or maybe the cuboidal, one thing. The middle layer, about 2 to 5, are polygonal cells. 
and superficial layer is umbrella shape okay or the part is this the lamina propria part is rich in the blood supply and nerve supply the muscular cord is again important in git we had talked that inner circular outer longitudinal here the case is reverse in ureter the case is reverse the muscular cord inner longitudinal and outer circular inner longitudinal and outer circular the adventitia or cirrhosa part is having the nerve supply blood supply and loose connective tissue if this section is taken from the lower part of the ureter there may come the extra muscular cord normally in the upper two third part the muscular cord is two layers in a longitudinal outer circular if the section is taken from the lower most part of the ureter there is outer again extra the longitudinal muscle fiber so in the lower part of the ureter there are the three layers inner longitudinal outer longitudinal and middle circular then come to the part of urinary bladder you can see in the diagram this is a star shaped lumen look here inner longitudinal muscle layer this one outer circular you can see here also now i am surprising that none of you ask me sir in a longitudinal you are speaking in a longitudinal but seen in the diagram it is just a bundles spotted like this and circular is complete rounded look here this is longitudinal when we take the transverse section it is seen in the small pieces and circular take the transverse section they are seen okay so this is the circular and this pieces they are longitudinal now urinary bladder again the mucosa is lined by the epithelium epithelium is again the traditional epithelium the lamina propria part rich in the same part blood vessels and nerves and like this the muscular cord that is important in urinary bladder the muscular cord is three layers inner longitudinal outer longitudinal and middle circular whichever the part whatever the part of urinary bladder take the section that is showing the three layers the contraction of these muscles helps in the excretion of the urine so they these muscles also in their detrusor muscle detrusor muscle d e t r o r u s o r detrusor muscle adventitia is having loose connective tissue and this thing and another important part that adventitia is covered by mesothelium it is named as cirrhosa so outer part of the urinary bladder is covered by the mesothelium that is the part of peritoneum and this is called also the cirrhosa now the question asks the slide is very simple when we take the section of urinary bladder 
during empty bladder in empty bladder if we take the section c the epithelium is about 5 to 7 layers try to understand when we take the section of urinary bladder during empty bladder while that time the epithelium of the urinary bladder is showing 5 to 7 layers but when we take the section of urinary bladder in the filled bladder that time that type the layers of epithelium are showing only 3 to 5 layers all right so what happens during the empty bladder the layers are increased reply give me answer then why they are seen in the 5 to 7 layer achhi tarah boliye mask ko niche karke bolo kon bol raha hai yes the point is this during the fullness of the bladder it will compress the epithelium it will compress the epithelium so it is seen only to 3 to 5 layers and during the empty bladder they are having the space so they will spread the number of the cells are not increased so the mucosa the epithelium of the bladder is about 5 to 7 layers okay so don't say they increasing in number they have the space so they will spread all right another thing which i have told you in the distal convoluted tubule and collecting ducts which helps in the concentration of the urine and this concentration of urine is under the control of anti diuretic hormone which is coming from the pituitary glands the point is this. the condition in which anti diuretic hormone is not acting the person is passing urine very watery and that condition is called diabetes insipidus diabetes insipidus that means the urine is not absorbed the electrolytes and these things not concentrated urine or rather it is watery urine and the condition is called anti sorry the diabetes insipidus so that is all about the part of the excretory system urethra we will talk in the reproductive system in the next week or not next week but this week tomorrow you will see the slide of GIT. So revise that part. Jejunum, ileum, duodenum, jejunum, ileum, colon, appendix. If I will have the time, then I will show you also the liver, gallbladder, and pancreas. If you will revise the part, then I can show you. And what about your revision of the lower limb? it has been shown in virtual table or not not yet okay tomorrow i will come and show you